Hey everyone, it's your girl Layla. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little bit late. I'm actually filming it on Supertober Wednesday when it's supposed to be up today and I have to go to work and like an hour so I don't think that this video is going to be up today. I'm so sorry this is a day late but oh well. Anyways we are going to be talking about the Suter house today in Inglewood. By the way if you guys are not already subscribed make sure you hit the subscribe button below. I upload three times a week Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday and my Wednesday videos of course are my spooky ones for the month of October. So I think I have two left after this. This is crazy. So I'm doing five total and I believe this one is my third. So yeah, I have two left. So this location is one of the more creepier ones. It has a lot of history, of course. This is one of the last creepy haunted places in Inglewood that I haven't done a video on yet that I wanted to for a while. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about the Suter House as well as I have a tour at the end of the video as per usual. Also, I'm going to try to include a little bit of footage from... I did a ghost tour back in September and they actually took us to the Suter House just to the outside of it during the night and I have a little bit of footage from there as well so I'll include that later on in the video. Let's go ahead and get started. The Suter House was actually built in 1907 and its original owner was Robert Suter. The Suter House is yet another haunted building in the community of Inglewood. As you guys know, I love Inglewood. It just has a lot of history and a lot of really haunted locations and this is one of the more creepier ones like I said earlier. So this is now a surgeon's office. I actually worked with one of the surgeons at the hospital from that clinic. Uh, I never worked in this building, but I don't know if he really talked about the hauntings of the Suter House, but I will get into that. So it was an isolation hospital for people with contagious diseases that were basically waiting to die. I think that a lot of hospitals and like older hospital buildings, isolation hospitals, I think that there definitely has, there has to definitely be some kind of haunting factor just because of all the lives that are taken because of something like back then I'm sure it was because of the flu or something so small these days. Back then modern medicine wasn't around and you had these places like isolation hospitals where people would literally just go there and Die. Eventually, it became a boarding house for people that worked on the railway. So the railway was located behind the Suter House. It is now a bike path. It was a railway right along the river. So a lot of people would stay there for, you know, a couple weeks to a couple months. A young couple had actually lived on the third floor. The lady's husband actually got around by jumping trains. So like I said, the train was very close to that building. So he would just get out and jump on the train and get to where his destination was and then come back the same way. One day he had a horrible accident so he slipped and the train actually ran over one of his legs and the hospital was somewhat close by. If you guys are familiar with the community of Inglewood, the hospital is actually where the stampede grounds are now so by car it's only maybe a five minute drive. It's super close. You can even walk there in maybe like 15 to 20 minutes but again he got his leg ran over by the train. This guy actually did not make it to the hospital. His wife reportedly still haunts this building to today. She can be seen from the third floor balcony looking out at the path right now. Today it's a path, but before it was a railway. Supposedly waiting for her husband to come back. The wife actually died a year later of a broken heart, which is really sad. I can completely understand why her ghost still haunts the place. Of course, she's waiting for her husband to come home. Like, it's really, it's really a sad story. Um, during my ghost tour, they actually talked about this building and how it had the highest level of paranormal activity. And during some ghost tours, you could actually see the lady on the third floor. And photos were actually taken with one of their other tours. And they didn't see anything when they took the picture, but when they, you know, uploaded it and tried to look at it. There was definitely a figure standing there looking out at them. So people that stay in the B&B have often complained to their owner about how there's an unfriendly lady next door. Now, nobody currently lives in the building, but the possibility of that actually happening is 
not very likely and they always describe her as having dark long curly hair people who work in the building report things moving around upstairs as well as electronic disturbances you guys know those electric frequency meters that they use in paranormal investigations well when i was on my ghost tour they had mentioned that this building reads a lot higher than other buildings in the area so there's not a lot of street lights or any kind of electric like electric boxes around that could potentially make this higher although they did say that it was possibly the air conditioners in the building making it read higher but that's something to note as well honestly i feel like if i was brave enough i would actually take a spirit box out there and see what i could find but i literally don't have anybody that would potentially do that with me so that is pretty much the story of the suitor house it is haunted by a widow and she currently still waits for her husband to this day. So I will give you guys a little bit of a tour of the house. The house is actually beautiful. Of course, I actually wasn't able to go inside. And um, I honestly, if even if I was able to go inside, I probably wouldn't be able to film in there because it is a clinic and, you know, patient's information and stuff are in there. So it would be completely impossible to actually go in and film. But I did film the outside for you as well as I will include a little clip of my ghost tour and what the guide had said about the building so yeah that is pretty much it for the story portion i will get into the tour right now i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys soon in my next video and if you're only watching me for spooktober i'll see you guys next wednesday for another episode and that one is going to be interesting so make sure you stay tuned for that i'm currently still doing my research on the building that i'm going to show you guys for next week but yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Basically, if you had a very, very contagious terminal disease, you came here to die. And somehow they scrubbed the walls clean enough to let people live in it not too long after that, too. <laughs> so imagine living in here after this was the uh, contagion death hospital. And uh, so uh, it goes on to become a boarding house. And it's a boarding house uh, for the railway company. Because the railway company uh, had their... Uh, railway station in town. So the, they tore down the railway station to build the tower in 68. Uh, and the railway tracks uh, did not run over there before, they ran right behind us here. 
Uh, it's now a walking, you know, the river walk, but uh, that was a railroad road track. So uh, the workers would uh, live here, they'd come out the back door and hop aboard the train as it went by to take it into town to work. Now, of course, the train didn't stop. Uh, as it was going by, they just jumped on and uh, got a free ride into town to work. And uh, a young couple moves into the third floor and uh, he is working on the railway and she would watch him uh, go to work every day and uh, and then she'd watch him come home and one particular day uh, she watched him hop aboard the train and slip and fall and uh, the train runs over his legs uh, they get in the ambulance and they are taking him to the second hospital in the city's history which is over uh, by the saddle dome. Uh, fun fact, uh, they built Ru uh, Rundle Hospital because the very first hospital they discovered was a whorehouse and uh, they decided maybe we shouldn't have a hospital in a whorehouse. Uh, so uh, they built Rundle. Now he gets uh, taken there and he dies en route. And uh, most of our uh, ghosts on this tour are friendly ghosts. They're like Casper. Obviously the indigenous man at Dean was not so happy uh, with her, uh, but this is the only one we would actually say is uh, a very angry woman. And uh, I guess she, you would be too if you've been hanging around for like a hundred years and uh, your husband's never come home. Uh, but, and you probably witnessed his death. And, uh, but uh, she stands up there and apparently will yell at people as they go by here. <laughs> and a lot of stories come from next door. Next door is a bed and breakfast. And as you can see, they park at the back here. And uh, people would come, they park, and they'd uh, go to the owners and go, where's the bitch next door? <laughs> and uh, the owners would say, uh, long white dress, long brunette uh, hair. And they were, yeah, that's her. And they were, yeah, well, we've got a story to tell you. <laughs> and so, Cappy came here and investigated. And uh, they got the normal stuff, batteries draining and that sort of thing. They never found anything to do with a ghost. This is not deemed definitely haunted. It is deemed uh, possibly haunted. But what they did find here was the EMF was off the charts. Never seen readings that high in their lives.